let's see, I need eggs, milk, chicken, and a man. Yes, I need to shop for a man. Well, I'm actually taken, but my next guest on La Dolce Vita, the formula for fabulous living. She shares her formula on how you can shop for your man. It's funny, it's inspiring, and it's empowering for women. So stay tuned. Frankie Lee, dimmi. Quale senso della vita? The meaning of life is to live la dolce vita, which is the formula for fabulous living. Hi, my name is Heather Picken, and welcome to the La Dolce Vita Show, the formula for fabulous living. I'm the catalyst in helping you to be more confident, create your dream business, and attract elite clients, and live a fabulous life. Here's Heather, helping you to upgrade your life to fabulous. Upgrade your life to fabulous, right, Frankie? You're fabulous. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of La Dolce Vita, the formula for fabulous living. I love what I do. I love this show. Interviewing people all around the world that have a formula. There is a formula. If you make chocolate chip cookies without flour, what do you have? Uh, I don't know. Maybe just a bunch <laughs> of ingredients and chocolate chips, and I'll probably eat all the chocolate chips. But anyways, the formula is really about, you know, actually today about shopping for a man. That's right. You go to a grocery store. Hmm, I need eggs, chicken, and oh, wait a minute. I need a man. Check. <laughs> uh, I love this topic. It's very fun and light. And I invited my guest back, uh, Lumari, who just wrote this book, Shopping for a Man. I love it. Um, I love the subtitle. I have to pull pull this out. The Ultimate Woman's Guide to Dating a Really Great Guy. And who does not want a great guy? I know I did not have the formula for this uh, years ago, Lumari. My life was tragic. <laughs> I kept attracting all the wrong men. And <laughs> thank God I do have the formula. Uh, but uh, let's talk about, well, first, let's thank you for coming on again, Lumari, being my guest today and, and sharing your formula. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. This is a blast. And this is the book, everyone, Shopping for a Man. And what's it. really fun about this is that most people, especially women, we always think that we have to adapt, we have to change, we have to please. But when you're shopping, you go and look for what's right for you. So if you wear a size five shoe, you do not go looking for a size 10. No matter how cute they are, that's not going to fit. <laughs> and so this book is all about all the different things that we excellent shoppers know how to do and applying it to it. dating. <laughs> I, I love it. And I love shopping. You know, fashion is, is my passion. So I love shopping and it's great. Yeah, we could shop for a man. Uh, I know a lot of times when I talk about the mistakes because if it's anyone that knows about mistakes, it's me. I am the queen of mistakes, but I have to tell you, it is part of my formula for finding my fabulous man. And a lot of times, you know, women, successful women, women that are empowered in other areas, they might not feel empowered when it comes to a man. They've got all these things and all these beliefs that are holding them back, but they do things that are crazy. So let's start yes. there because I was one of them. I'll admit it. I was one of them that was not doing things that, you know, I'm like Heather, don't do that. So let's, let's yes. start there, Lumari. Let's start with some of the mistakes that women are making when shopping for a man. Well, I think the biggest mistake that women are making is trying to figure out what he needs and giving it to him because you're not considering what you need and who you are. So when you're shopping, it's all about the quality. When you go in, if you're looking for oranges, you make sure they're not bruised, you make sure they're fresh, you make sure that that is the kind of orange you want. When you're shopping for a man, you wanna look at what are the qualities in a man that you want? 
what are your own qualities that you adore about yourself? If you're a strident, forthright woman, well, you don't want to play meek. It's just not who you are. So how are you going to play all the games that everybody says that you're supposed to play? This is how you flirt, and this is how you communicate, and this is how you give him what he wants. Where are you in this picture? And women are trained to look outside themselves and figure out how that works instead of looking inside and going, wait, the first quality I need in a man, I need a man with, for me personally, I was looking for humor. If you can't make me laugh, I am not staying around. Period. That's how Absolutely. I am. I like joy. I like fun. I like smart, but it has to be joyful, fun, smart too, right? And you know, like, so I'm looking at the qualities for myself, what I appreciate, and then putting that forward and looking, well, what are those qualities out there in the man that I'm dating? Most women don't even get there. Mm. They don't even look at that part. And that's the first thing. It's, it's so true. I know, you know, when I was out there dating, I wouldn't really, you know, I, I would not be very clear on what I wanted. You know, it's like if you're going yeah. to the store and you don't make that list, you could spend hours just going through, you know, down the aisle and then go, okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then go home and go, where the hell's the cream? I was supposed to pick <laughs> up cream. Exactly. So, so, you know, really getting clear on what you want, I think is key and knowing who you are, because that had been a life lesson for me, not really knowing uh, who I was, not valuing myself and just settling for anything. And so, you know, I think those things are so important and, and we really learn by those things. Now, let, let's talk about some of the beliefs that really stop women from putting themselves out there yes. in finding their great guy. So, so what are some of those beliefs that you find? Because, you know, like I know there are women out there that maybe they've been married and now, you know, they're divorced. And so they're looking mm -hmm. for that great guy. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, they've really never had a great love of their life and yeah. they're getting older and they're thinking, is this really possible? Or they might be scared or they might look at themselves and say, well, I'm not a size two. Right. So, so what are some yeah, of the really. things that are, you find are really holding them back and how can they navigate around that? Well, I think the biggest thing that is really funny, because I love this one, is like, there's not enough good men out there. All right. Well, you only need one. So why are you looking at the numbers? <laughs> That's true. You only need one. And women are going, well, you know, they say at this age, there's only so many of this. So you already cut yourself off from the beauty and the fabulous guys out there because you're thinking that the odds are against you already. So don't think like that. That's a belief system that is going to cut you off from anything else that you need. So you want to look at it and go, okay, there's a lot of billions of people on the planet, right? You need one. And so you're going to look for the man who has those qualities that are right for you. So that's a huge belief that women have right up front. Another belief that when they get a little bit further into the dating scene, they think they can change a guy. Yeah. Well, you know, he's like this, but man, and I, my, this is what I say. The only thing you can change about a man is his wardrobe. That's it. <laughs> I love it. So that's great. You know, if you say, ah, oh, maybe he shouldn't be wearing t-shirts all the time, that you can do. But if you look at him and go, he needs to be more forthright, or he needs to be more laid back, or he needs to be more quiet, or he needs to have a No, he's not the one. Don't try changing him, and don't try changing yourself just to get a guy. Mm, be who so you guilty. are in your <laughs> brilliance. I have been so guilty, Lamaria. These yes. are really great points for women, you know, to, to really grasp and listen to, because it took me a while uh, to get that, you know, yeah. trying to change the person or falling in love with their potential, right? That yes. Huge pitfall. And, and, 
you know, another thing I want to ask you, what about making lists? You hear that all the time, like making your list of what you want. It's like a million, <laughs> a million things yeah. on the list. And I have to tell you, uh, I, I did make a list when it came to my uh, boyfriend, but there were, there was actually one thing that, uh, that I put on the list that I didn't want that he had and it was <laughs> filed, but I love and adore her <laughs> like she was my own. So I if love you it. To that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. I made a list. Okay. But the list is more about qualities. So instead of about, oh, he needs to look like this or he needs to work in this field or something around there, you want to look at the qualities you want. So when you're making, and I made a list and, and my, the funny part of it is my list had over a hundred things on it. And, and I like, if I'm going to make a list, I'm going to make a list. <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, after being with my husband, now husband, we, we weren't married yet, but after three years together, when we knew we were going to get married, then I let him see the list. <laughs> yeah, don't let them see the list until I didn't know it's like until it's done but it was really funny because there were two things on the list that I didn't really want for myself my mother I figured she would like that <laughs> those are the only th two things he didn't have I'm like good I don't have to please my mother anymore anyway <laughs> I, I love it. So, so the list can be good. It's just really yes. focusing on the qualities and the characteristics, not well, oh, got to have six pack abs. Uh, yeah, and really. Drive a Mercedes and live in a mansion. <laughs> well, if you have those things, I'm going to read you some of the things that are in the book because these have to be on your list. Okay. Number one, he's available. True. Guess what? Most people don't even put that on their list. They don't think about that. <laughs> They go, well, you know, he needs, no, no, he needs to be available. And that doesn't mean just single. That means he wants a relationship and he wants one with you. That's available. That's a whole other thing, right? It's like, yeah. oh yeah, now it's not just that he's single and he lives in the neighborhood. <laughs> number two, he has to be madly in love with you. That was number two on my list. Mm. Number one, available because I'd, Met plenty of single guys, but they weren't available for the relationship. So what good is that? Wasting time. You know, cute, doesn't matter. <laughs> so then he's madly in love with you. Ah, now, now we're getting somewhere, right? <laughs> now you don't have to fight for the relationship, right? And you're connected. You're caring about each other. Then he really wants a relationship. So this is more about him being that open where he's looking at me and you know, we women know, we generally do um, make a commitment and want to work towards a relationship. I put work in parentheses because I like the word play, but that's what everybody says work, right? But you want him to be engaged in that. Like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm not leaving this one behind. Are you kidding me? Right? Well, we have to have those. He has to appreciate you. So now that all of those things, and now we're coming down to, okay, now he's starting to know you and he has to appreciate the woman you are, no matter what that is, because you're not going to change to make him appreciate you, right? It's you so want true. him to look at you and go, oh man, <laughs> you're fabulous. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good word, right? <laughs> I mean, these are the things that make it happen. and. He listens to you. All right. Very, very important. He has to listen because he has to want to hear what you have to say. Yes. Now we're creating a relationship. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The, those are so important. And Ed, if you're watching or listening, you pass the test. You're good. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> lights. And, and it's so true because I can speak for myself, you know, over the years and just being in these relationships that were such a disconnect. I did not have those things on the list. Like those right. things were not the boxes were not checked off and it's so important i went on a journey for myself and bought so many things on relationships like books like yours so that's why i recommend ladies yeah. that you check out uh lomari's book and you know really learn from the wisdom and experts because once you once you start reading and you just you start implementing the strategies 
you'll find yourself attracting a great guy as Lumari talks about in, 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 in her book. And it's possible. I mean, I always thought it wasn't possible for me. And I also want to hit upon being an entrepreneur because we've got a lot of women entrepreneurs out there that are watching or listening to this. And I know for a fact, you know, since I've been in an amazing relationship, it has changed the way that I am thinking about my business, showing up my business. My business has gone to the next level because I'm with a fabulous, powerful guy that is also embracing his fem feminine side as well. So he just supports me in my mission and my vision and my purpose. So I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about that in, in choosing the right guy uh, as opposed to you know, getting with someone that can really drive your business down or your career. Well, and that's really important because I'm an entrepreneur as well. And in my work as an intuitive and a coach, it's like I'm working with different people in all different levels of their life and their business. And you want to pick when you're looking for someone, if they're supportive, if they're appreciative, if they look at you when you're mumbling and grumbling and feeling like, eh, maybe, then they go, you, they have to be your cheerleader. They have to sit there and, and have their strength and conviction about how great you are so that you can bring it to the next level so that you look at it and go, okay, today you might be feeling funky, but that doesn't translate to the rest of your life. That's a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good man partner who looks at you and goes, yeah, I know how you feel, but that's not really the truth of it. The truth of it is you're amazing and you're going to do this and I'm by your side and I'm going to help whatever help looks like. That's powerful. That's mm. powerful. And we need that. It's so true. And they need it as well. They, they oh, need yes. a woman that can support them in their vision of whatever they want to do. And I think uh, that men are really, they, they can be fearful if they're, let's just say, they, they start getting into a relationship and, and they start seeing it being serious and committed. They're, they're afraid that they might lose themselves or lose yeah. their freedom. So how can you speak to women to kind of ease the minds of men once, you know, they, sh they make the list, they shop for the guy and they get them? Well, what's really funny, I was just um, uh, sharing about my book in, at, in downtown Santa Fe where I live. And a young guy came over to me and he looked, he goes, yes. And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're teaching women to be confident. I want a confident woman in my life. I work really hard. I want a confident woman by my side. This book is going to bring confidence into women's lives. I'm like, whoa, he. I <laughs> he love was, it. And it was like, yes. Yes, these are the men we want. It's so true because men, they, they want women that, that can be assertive, that can speak up for themselves instead of going, okay, whatever you want. Exactly. And we want to be the same way. You know, it's like you want to be able to share in your life and, and respond to the person that you're with, but you don't want to give up yourself and who you are. Yes. It's not going to work. Oh, Period. yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> it's not going to work. So wouldn't you just like to have somebody there? And like the more men that I've spoken to about this book, which is really funny, they get very excited. It's like, yeah, okay, well, good. Then she, if she knows what she wants, then when she wants me, she'll really want me. It's like, yes. Yes. Because people originally, when I said shopping for a man, they said, well, you know, Men might think that's offensive. And I said, nah, men will think it's funny. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's interesting. There can be a different perspective when it comes to men and women on, on viewing things like that. But you're all about empowering women. Like, I exactly. feel like the title is so great because it kind of is very playful. But at the same time, it's really getting women that are single to be serious about themselves and, and realize that you have value and purpose and what you're offering in a relationship. And when you value yourself, then you can connect with a great guy. Exactly. And so many of the books that are out there tell women how to be something else, how to please someone else, how to dress for somebody else, how to flirt, how to do this, but none of it's genuine. It's not the same thing as, 
is improving yourself. That's different. If you're in the path of discovery and self-improvement, like you and I both are, then yes, you're going to want challenges and you're going to want to learn about things. And if it's relationship, you're going to want to learn about relationship. But there's different than trying to change yourself to see if you can get a guy, the one that you right. think might be right for you. But if he isn't understanding who you are and you're trying to change to please him, it will never work. I want all women in this world to be completely empowered, enjoy who they are, live to the fullest, and then go out and take over. <laughs> exactly. And it, it, like I said before, it's so inspiring and empowering when you have a man that will support you in what you want to do and realize that you don't have to be perfect, you know, that you can... Uh, you know, that that person can embrace both sides, you know, the good right. and bad when you're not feeling so positive and happy because, it, you know, it happens to, to all of us, you know, so that's really key. <laughs> no, and that's it. And this is when, that's why I use the, the metaphor and the training of shopping. Yes. Because you're going to go, you're going to create your list. You're going to do self-discovery. What are the beliefs you have that are in the way? For you being satisfied with yourself and finding a really great guy. What is in your closet of beliefs that are so out of tune with you that you have to toss them? You have to go in the closet, clean it out, get rid of that stuff. And then you have to go shopping. So what are you shopping for? What kind of a guy are you looking for as far as his qualities? Do you need a guy who's dry clean only because that's the kind of woman you are? Or are you more like tossed it in the machine and let's get rolling, right? There's all different ways that we are. There's all different ways that we shop. There's all different things that we can use as tools. And for me, shopping is perfect because you're always looking for what's right for you. Whether you're looking for clothes, like we women always are, does it fit right? Does it complement you? Do I look good in it? You know, am I going to get some use out of this or is this like a one-time thing that I'm going to toss in the back of the closet? But if you're looking for a car, you're doing the same thing. Like, you know, how big it needs to be, how much gas it uses, all of those things. If we apply it to finding a mate and dating in the world, we're going to have a blast because then it's not emotionally charged. Absolutely. If I, if I want to jag and all they have is Volvos on the lot, oh, well, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. I, I love that. And, and let's talk a little bit about dating in general, because a lot of women can be overwhelmed. I, wanna, I don't want to put myself online, but we are living in a digital world. I mean, do you recommend that or does not one size fits all? What's your philosophy on that? Well, I think that... Um, if you're comfortable doing stuff online, then you should just do it and don't even worry about it. You have to still have that criteria. Right. So because we know that this, it's more difficult to read someone when they're online than when they're sitting next to you. You can't see all of the stuff that's going on. You can't see them flinch if you say something. If you're sitting at dinner with somebody and you say something and they judge you and they give you that flinchy look like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right? You're going to catch it. Online, maybe not. But on the other hand, you have access to more people online. So you should play where it's comfortable and then stretch a little bit. So there's dating services that you can do it. There's all sorts of different things. And if you really want to meet a great guy, you should go out there because it's shopping. Sure. And, <laughs> and even though I love uh, Zappos and all of the other great internet stores that I shop at, right? I still have to try it on. I still have to have it in person. Otherwise, it's just a cute picture. <laughs> that, that's true because if you meet them online, I mean, some of my experience when I was dating, they would be texting or wanted to call me on the phone. And, and a lot of times I didn't want to call them on the phone. I just wanted to meet them in person, like just kind of like make it a surprise and not have an ongoing dialogue back and forth because, you know, if I feel like if someone's serious, they'll take that initiative and they'll say, okay, great, let's meet. Yeah. And there's no insurance policy here. You could have somebody that you think is just so-so and then they show up and you go, whoa, they did not translate like that online. 
he's charming and he's sweet and he's adorable and he's really attentive. Whereas online, he might, you know, not share the same way. And you could have it just the opposite. Somebody's really charming online and all the texts are fabulous. And then you find out you have somebody who's really distracted. Yes. It, it's know? so true. I, I can tell you all the crazy dating so-called horror stories and they're, they're not that bad, but they were right. interesting where, you know, I'd talk to someone on the phone and they'd sound great. And then you meet them in person, absolutely no connection. It's like, yeah. wow, this is crazy. I actually met my boyfriend of all places on Tinder. And the reason why I met him on Tinder is I heard someone met their partner on Tinder. And I'm like, does this really work? And so the way that you do it is you swipe, you swipe. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I came across my boyfriend and I saw his pictures. And what I love, talk about shopping for a man, is that he was dressed in a suit. I'm like, oh, yes. wow, he looks great. He had all these pictures. Yes. He was like really animated. And yes. I did something that was unheard of for me is that I reached out. I looked at his profile and I saw that one of the things that he did was uh, he was a winemaker. And I said, oh, what kind of wine do you make? Do you make? And normally I would never reach out. It, something just told yes. me to reach out and ask him a question. That same night we had our first date and the rest was history. I love it. I love it. And you have to be adventurous. I mean, it's life is an adventure anyway. Yes. And the thing is that when you're using the tools of shopping, you can look at, you may have assumptions about yourself and what you need and want and discover that they're not true. Like you might think that you need to have somebody who's like the total business guy and he works on wall street and he does this, 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 and this. And then you meet those guys and you go, wait, this doesn't really intrigue me. That's just something I wrote down that I thought I would like. I'm more into the basketball guy, you know? And so then you, you have a revelation, this, but you, you wouldn't have had it if you didn't put yourself out there. Yes. If you didn't just go, you know what? I love men. All men are fabulous. I need one. So I'm going to check them out. Because the other thing is you can really make some really great friends that are guys. They may not be your mate. They may not be the guy you're going to date. And if you do marry, the marrying kind, right? But you might meet some fabulous people out there. Why not? Why Absolutely. not? And, and I like what you're saying. You know, take the pressure off yourself. One, uh, my girlfriend, she said something very important to me when I was dating because I, I was so frustrated. And she said, Heather, just have fun. And when the right one comes along, you'll know. And that took the yeah. pressure off of me. And I just made it a game. I had fun. <laughs> yes. And see, shopping is fun. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, I, and I, it's I just, not emotional. You know? it, it's, it's so true. But yet a lot of women, I really want women to, to get this, is that when you have fun, you know, that the man will come and that you just have to be light about it. Don't give so much emotion to it because that will cause you, you know, just to exactly. be in what I call your freak out mode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just, yeah, just to have fun. And Lumari, thank you so much for oh, being my guest today. Blast. And I highly recommend my fabulous women followers that are listening or watching this show, do yourself a favor. If you are single and you're ready to go shopping, check out Lumari's book. And Lumari, what is the website where they can find out about your book and also post it in the show notes too? Definitely. It is shoppingforaman.com. You'll see a little video there. You put your name and email address in the box and click get access. And you'll be able to, if, if timing is perfect for you, I'm going to have it free on Kindle for a few days in the beginning of May, so you can do it there. And then you can get it on Kindle, and in the fall, it's coming out in paperback, but I'm taking pre-orders from everybody. So shopping for a man, and if you sign up on my website, you'll be one of the first people to get it before it's even in all the bookstores. I love it. And I read the book. It is absolutely fabulous and fun. So I highly recommend that thank you pick up your copy now. So Lumari, thank you so much again for being my guest today. Oh, my pleasure. It's always a pleasure, Heather. Thank you so much for inviting me.
And before we leave today, my final words of wisdom, my La Dolce Vita philosophy is that, you know, we're all here to have fun, to live what I call La Dolce Vita. That means the sweet life. And when you have a man that really uh, supports you and your vision, your mission and purpose, you become unstoppable. So I hope you had fun today and make sure that you rate, review and subscribe to this show on iTunes and click that bell on YouTube, that Pavlov's bell that lets you know when the next episode is released. Until next time, this is Heather Pickin. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. So if you found this show to be fabulous, please share with your fabulous friends, rate, review, and subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. Wow. I'll make sure I take a beatbox lesson, right? <laughs> or give my little chihuahua a bone. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Fabulous. <laughs>